Damien Ferry here, live for the Unshackled. Now, we're at a really special event today called Save Our Statues. Now, recently we've had uh, statues that have been defaced. We've had um, one here, which is the none other than the Captain Cook statue. Just recently, we've had people spray paint, change the date regarding the, uh, the Australia Day change that a lot of people on the far left are pushing. Now, it's very important that we as people stand up for our culture, our heritage. I mean, these people here are pioneers. They laid the foundations of this great nation. We have to make sure we have respect for what they've done, because if they didn't do what they did, we'd still be in the desert here, with sticks, rocks. We wouldn't have these beautiful buildings that you see over here, as you can point over there. Beautiful buildings like that, they just would not exist. That wouldn't exist. You see that, you know, you hear the church bells ringing over there. Beautiful landscape, buildings, skyscrapers. You've, you've got the lot here in Sydney City. And we would not have any of this if it wasn't for the British that came here and brought the civilized nation that we've got now. Now, today we've got several speakers that are going to be speaking. We've got Nick Folks, George Jamison, Jeff Pryor, just to name a few and they're going to be covering the issue of the statue defamation which is happening here in Australia by Antifa and the far left and also overseas in America. Now, there's obviously that happening recently. We've had people doing rallies in trying to change the Australia Day date, which is an absolute disgrace because it is when this country was founded. So we are going to just continue standing up for our rights make sure that our views get out there because people have to embrace what we have here which is very very special and important so we're going to provide you with all the highlights of today um, get out there support us on our page and hope to see you soon save our statues save our heritage save our culture sick and tired of the left-wing attack on our culture. They want to rewrite history, and we're here today to say we should respect our colonial history, our heritage, and the people that built this great nation, instead of denigrating it, destroying it, ridiculing it all the time. We're tired of the attacks on Australian culture. they come down under the cover of darkness and attack our culture, attack our statues. We challenge them to come here today and do it while we're here and it's been a no show. The left is in disarray.
today because we're proud Australians, we love our country, and we're sick and tired of the left-wing attack on our culture, on our heritage, on our history. It's going to stop. Last week we witnessed the vandal, a left-wing vandal come down here, a cultural club, cultural Marxists come down here and deface Captain Cook's statue with the inscription on it, change the day. And that's what they want to do, they want to change our history, they want to change everything. The great British Empire built this nation and we should be grateful for the ancestors who have built this nation instead of celebrating it and ridiculing it. And you can't change history. History is history. And we should be celebrating the 26th of January, Australia Day, as a nation, as a founding of our nation. And many of these lefties, they talk about Captain Cook and arriving on January the 26th. In 1788, that just shows you how much the left know about our history. They don't even know our history, yet they still denigrate it. And that's cultural Marxism, that they want to turn everything upside down and rewrite history to suit their narrative. And we don't approve of it. We should maintain and respect our culture, respect the great thing, the glory that brought this nation to what it is today. The people all around the world want to come. And they talk about the genocide, they talk about the genocide 229 years ago. But we want to talk about the genocide of today. The major political parties replacing Australians with mass third world immigration. Now that's genocide. We can't change the past. We can't change what happened 229 years ago. But we can have the issue influence on today's politics. But the major parties want to swap us for third world migrants and refugees and change the ethnic and demographic makeup of this country. So Australians don't exist. We've fought hard to create the, one of the best nations in the world and they're giving it away. They're giving our country away for nothing, for money. Their loyalty is to greed and money. It's not to family or identity or liberty or freedom. It's nothing. They've forgotten what matters. And what we've seen with this continual attack, attack on Australian culture we don't see enough politicians standing up. There's not enough people in the media standing up and saying it's wrong. The mainstream media, the bureaucracy, the parliament, they're quiet. Most of them are quiet seeing these constant attacks on Australian culture, on our way of life, on everything. And it's got to stop. To have a real, we need a real political representation in Australia. We need more people in parliament. We need to combine the intellectual movement, the grassroots street movement, and political representation to have a lasting positive effect on policy in Australia. Save our statues. But to speak, there's the future of Australia with Labor and Liberal current economic policy, immigration. There's the future. That's the sort of future that we don't want. We want the Burka ban. There's so many issues in Australia at the moment. It's not just the attack on our history, but it's what's happening today with immigration and multiculturalism and foreign ownership. We're a losing battle at the moment because the major parties want to destroy Australia. They want to change the demography of Australia. They want to rewrite our history. They want to make us feel shame. Shame for being a civilised nation for being such a nation that's created one of the highest standard of livings in the world. We should be ashamed according to the mainstream political parties and the media and academia. But we feel pride. We're proud Australians. We love our country. We're sick and tired of seeing it denigrated. We're sick and tired of seeing everything change for negatives. There's no positives in all this constant change over the last 30 to 40 years. When were the voters ever consulted on this radical transformation of Australia? Exactly right. We never had any referendum. And uh, Fraser was asked, Malcolm Fraser, many years ago, before he went to hell, he was asked by a journalist, why didn't you put a referendum to the people on multiculturalism? And he said, I knew that would lose. They know. They know that multiculturalism, they know that all this immigration is not popular with the Australian people. Yet they go against the wishes of the Australian people. I call that betrayal. That's betrayal. It's treasonous. It's traitorous. And one day, those traitors will be hanging. Hanging from the lamps. Hanging from the posts and the lamp posts in Australia because they've betrayed us. They've betrayed us. And Dick Smith said recently that the pitchforks will come out. And they are. The pitchforks are coming out. 
Absolutely. And we can't wait. The left wants the vision, the major political parties want the vision. Well, we're going to take advantage of it because when we're down the count, we're going to keep fighting back.
the great things that the British brought to Australia and established a great nation. The people of the British Isles, we never hear about their story. It's always being ridiculed. The convicts are always being ridiculed. The pastoralists are always being ridiculed. We never hear of the great nation, these people, the massive contribution that they made to Australia. We should respect them. And we talk about this multicultural mosaic today. And I want to know where does Anglo-Australia fit in this mosaic today? We have no funding. They don't teach our history anymore. And they say that the African culture, the upper Congo, Unga Bunga tribes, and you know, we've got the Muslim tribes of the desert, you know, and they're equal of culture as the, as the great Western civilization. You've got to be joking. This is how you know stupid the left is that they pick cultures that aren't equal and we should not be subsidizing and uh, you know uh, ta using people's taxation to fund these structures and grow this nonsense that all cultures are equal based on cultural relativism. Our culture and our civilization is a great civilization and it should be uh, you know, protected but also remain the dominant, the dominant culture, the dominant way of life in Australia instead of saying these third world cultures are equal to ours. It's absolute nonsense. But we hear the same thing from the major political parties all the time. And from fools over there like that, I bet every time you go to the toilet, mate, uh, your fingers slip through the toilet paper. You're an inspiration for the control, mate. The typical lefty, you've got nothing intelligent to say. Ah! Ah, 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 ah. Great argument, mate. You're the reason you give us inspiration to keep fighting drongos like you. You're an inspiration for birth control. But our culture is a great culture, and it'd be nice if the politicians acknowledged it for once and gave it funding, but we don't. The Anglo people, we talk about Aboriginal recognition in the Constitution. I'm not for that, but if we're going to recognise Aboriginal people in the Constitution, let's recognise the British, the Anglos, for the nation builders. The Aborigines, yes, they're the first peoples, but let's recognise the people who built this nation, the Anglos. But no, we can't recognise them. And this is what we get all the time. This misappropriation of history, that the import and the massive contribution made by the Anglos doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Stan Grant talks about you know, the history of Aboriginals not being recognised. I see the more that the Anglo history of this nation and the culture is not being recognised. We don't get any privilege. They talk about white privilege. I would like to know because I'd like to clock on and get some of that privilege because we don't. Now, let's get this clear about who the people are that want to tear these statues down. They're Marxists, Marxist scum. And they're the people behind multiculturalism. You know what? They hate the British. That's what this is really about. Yet this country was built on a framework. It's built on a legal framework. It's built on a governmental framework that came from the British. And this country is one of the greatest nations on earth. You know, you don't see any Anglo-Saxons shooting down a mascot to jump on a plane to go into these third world holes. They don't go there. They come to Australia because Australia is better than their country. They have voted with their feet. And let us let me say this, they want to come here, they fit into this culture, they integrate and they assimilate. And if they don't want to, go back to Mascot and shoot back to your own country. Most of these immigrants, they chose to come here, come here. But when they come here, everybody has to bow down and grovel. Let's get this clear. We're not groveling to anyone. Immigrants fit in or they go home. That's the way it's going to work here in Australia. We won't put up with it. They hate the British. They want to pull down these statues. They want to change the inscriptions. You know, Stan Grant, look, there's nothing stopping the Aboriginals from building a statue. Nothing at all. But no, instead they just want to pull down the statues that were put up to honour people like Captain Cook. They didn't have the technology to chart the eastern coast of Australia. The British had the technology and Captain Cook did it. He was a very brave man. He was a pioneer. And that's why there's a statue here to honour him. We ought to be proud of our heritage, proud of our culture and proud of Captain Cook. Yeah. My parents came from the former Republic of Yugoslavia. When they came to Australia, they worked hard and Australia is the land of milk and honey. Australia's been really good to our people. When immigrants come to Australia, they need to assimilate. This country is an absolutely awesome country. 
please people, anyone, these minority groups, stand up with patriotic Australians if you love this country. That's all I ask of you. It's not hard to do. I call myself Australian first before I call myself a Serbian. That's what immigrants need to do. Thank you very much. We're going to continue to watch the developments, what's going on in the media with this uh, horrible assault on, you know, on, on the monuments, on our heritage, on our colonial heritage. And, yeah, you know, it's just amazing that, you know, people like uh, Bill Shorten thought that he had some momentum and mentioned it, that some of these statues should come down. And uh, there was no momentum. It was just like the days of the Republic. They were talking about the Republic. Let's become a Republic. Let's change the flag. There's no momentum. Australians are worried about the real issues affecting this nation. They're worried about housing affordability. They're worried about immigration. They're worried about employment for their families, for their kids. They're worried about university places. They're the real issues that government should be concentrating on instead of this diversion, this diversion of same-sex marriage, the diversion of attacking our statues. There's diversion everywhere we look because they don't want to face the truth that they've trashed this country, they've absolutely destroyed it. I grew up in a nation that we called it the lucky country where you could find employment and good paying jobs and so could your children and housing was affordable and you could leave your back door open not, uh, oh, excuse that pun, that just sounds from Oxford Street but you could leave your back door open with a key and you wouldn't be robbed but we see what's happened with the last 30 or 40 years in Australia with the policy failure that's been forced upon the Australian people people can't make ends meet they can't afford to find affordable housing. They can't afford to find a good job. Their kids can't get into universities because they've been swamped by Chinese students. This is the nation that Labor, Liberal and the Greens have created. And if we don't have political change in Australia, there's going to be nothing left. And we had Jerry Harvey just last week, this, this shallow sort of corporate wanker, talking about materialism and saying that, oh, wouldn't it be great if we had 100 million people here Let's just turn the keys over to China and we'll just turn it into one big shopping mall. There's no, there's no sort of, uh, you know, respect for our heritage or acknowledgement or nothing like that or identity or preserving our way of life or standard of living. Malcolm Turnbull, that live over in Darling Point with his swank mates over there, you know, and well, who knows what they do at night, but, you know, <laughs> we're, we're voting for these people that don't care about us. And we know with the immigration policy and the refugees being placed... There's no refugees being placed in Darling Point or the eastern suburb. Surprise, surprise. We'll dump them all in Western Sydney. We see this time and time again. And we do need a political revolution in Australia at the ballot box. And if it's not going to be at the ballot box, well, who knows what's going to happen in the future. But there is going to be civil strife that we can see already in places like Scandinavia and Sweden and also in France. Is this what we want? We don't want a race war. We don't want division. We want a harmonious country. We want people to come together. But when you bring incompatible people from the third world and they've got their own agenda, you're going to have strife. You're going to have division. You're going to have friction. And you're going to have hate. And that's what the government wants. They want everybody to have one big shit fight. But we should be having one big shit fight with the government and we should not be voting for Labor, Liberal or the Greens anymore. So thank you very much. <laughs> Images and they're putting us in the rank. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>